Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Yesterday we began the topic of exponents, and today we'll do our second second video in the series of ten videos. The problem for today is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. And today is our lesson number one hundred and seventeen. We'll go to, I'll go through the problem first, I'll read the problem to you and after I have read it, I want you to pause the video I want you to do the problem yourself and once you have done it yourself resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds time make a habit of doing that every single time regardless of whether I remind you or not do you understand? here's, here's, the, here's the problem 1 over 16, 1 16 raised to negative 2 times 1 4 raised to negative 3 times one half raised to negative one we are being asked to simplify this thing simplify it and what is it equal to here that's it I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video alright we have one sixteenth here one sixteenth can be written as one over two raised to four that's 1 16th and then outside we have power of negative 2 similarly here 1 4th can be written as 1 half raised to negative 2 or uh, raised to 2 rather and then outside we have a power of negative 3 and then finally we have 1 half which is the power of negative 1 so now they are all 1 half immediately we can tell that these two are not what we are looking for it's going to be one of these let's simplify it so now all we have to do is simply multiply the powers 4 times negative 2 4 4 times negative 2 is going to be negative 8 1 half raised to negative 8 that's the first one 2 times negative 3 is going to be 1 half raised to 2 times 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 and then we'll finally we have 1 half raised to negative 1 that's it now we have the same basis 1 half 1 half 1 half we simply have to add up the power negative 8 negative 6 and negative 1 negative 8 plus negative 6 is going to be negative 14 negative 14 and negative 1 is negative 15 that's it we are done it's 1 half raised to negative 15 the answer is B. The answer is B. That was it. Do you want to do one more? Let's do one more. I'll give you a few seconds so I'm obstructed view and, and then we will do the next one. Again, as soon as I put the problem on the blackboard, I want you to do it yourself. Okay? Here's, here's the next problem. In the next problem, we are given two quantities in the two columns, column A and column B. And our job is to be able to tell which column is bigger or if they are equal. Here's the, here's, here are the quantities. 7 raised to 27 minus 7 raised to 26 versus 6 times 7 raised to 26. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. And then once you have done it, Resume the video and then we'll compare the work together. I'm going to erase this part now, we no longer need it. Okay. What can we do here? Well, here we have 7 raised to 27. 7 raised to 27 can be written as 7 times 7 raised to 26 minus 7 raised to 26 and that can be written as times 1. Now think of now think of 7 raised to 26 as some, some quantity, let's say x here, so this is our x here and think of this as a and b so we have a x, a x minus b x as you can see we have a common factor of x we can take out the x and we're left with a minus b a is the 7, b is the 1 and x of course is 7 raised to 26, that's the common factor 7 raised to 26 appears here 7 raised to 26 appears here. Perhaps I'm explaining too much. So 7 raised to 26 is the common factor it comes out. Once we take out 7 raised to 26 from here, we are left with 7. 
minus, here once we take out 7 raised to 26, we are left with 1. So it's 7 raised to 26 times 7 minus 1, which is 6, which is exactly what we have here. The answer is C. These two quantities turned out, turned out to be equal. Want to do one more? Let's do one more. Again, as soon as I finish writing the problem on the blackboard, pause the video. Here's the next one. Column A, column B. Again, we are being asked to compare the two quantities. In the first column, we have 9 raised to 10. In the second column, we have 9 raised to 9 plus 3 times 9 raised to 9, 9 raised to 8 rather, plus 6 times 9 raised to 8. One more time. In the first column, we have 9 raised to 10, 9 raised to 10 versus 9 raised to 9 plus 3 times 9 raised to 8 plus 6 times 9 raised to 8. Do it yourself. I'm going to erase this now, we no longer need it. Again, 9 raised to 9 can be written as 9 times 9 raised to 8 plus 3 times 9 raised to 8 plus 6 times 9 raised to 8. As we can see, 9 raised to 8 is the common factor. 9 raised to 8 is the common factor. We're going to take it out common. Once we take out 9 raised to 8 as the common factor, we are left with 9 from this part, first term, plus we are left with 3 from the second term, plus 6 from the third term. And that gives us 9 raised to 8 times 9, 3 plus 6 is 9, 9 plus 9 is 18, is 18. Which in turn can be written as 9 raised to 8, which just comes down, times 9 times 2. 9 times 2 is our 18. Now we have 9 raised to 1 here. Now we have 9 raised to 1 here, and 9 raised to 8 here. Let's combine these two here, 9 raised to 1 and 9 raised to 8 which is simply 9 raised to 9 times 2 and we have to compare this quantity versus that quantity which is 9 raised to 10 which is same as 9 times 9 raised to 9. So here we have 9 times 9 raised to 9 versus 2 times 9 raised to 9. The answer turns out to be A. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.